as well. And um, and there are very mysterious things because you do not see it in other caves. People would dip their, their hand in ochre and then squish the, the, the palm against uh, against the wall, and it would give some roundish dots and a lot of dots. And there was apparently one person uh, who had left many dots because he apparently had a bra a broken. Uh, deformed little finger. The little finger st stuck out somehow and you have a round palm print mm. and a little print of a yeah, finger. Amazing. Yeah. So, amazing. And you know that was the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Roger but not said, can you, please, yeah. can you please repeat about the age of the cave? Well, the cave itself, uh, we don't know how old it is, but the paintings date back to uh, uh, 32,000 years in time. There might be some something a little bit younger, we do not know, uh, and some some of it might be older because uh, they have ochre paintings and there's no, uh, no, no uh, scientific method to date ochre. But the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the charcoal paintings can be dated with great accuracy. And what is also strange, they, somebody started a painting and then they left. And it's known that three and a half thousand years later, somebody continued the painting. <laughs> and then a bear scratched, a bear that hibernated over it, left scratch marks. And over the scratch mark, there was man, bear, man, man, bear. So it's completely, uh, and it goes, some of it is not like time does not occur like like in our datings yeah maybe 50 years later somebody discovers it 3000 years later somebody continues it wow. it's just completely completely fantastic the bear was an artist <laughs> yeah. too <laughs> so but it's it's just a, a film that i i like to make because i'm so fascinated about cave art when when was this discovered 1994 and instantly sealed. Mm -hmm. The discoverers did exactly the right things because they they work for the uh, Ministry of Culture and they are the guardians of some other caves in this area. And um, and they went on outings and and they were very good in discovering uh, places and they discovered this immediately. Didn't tell anyone and when they continued exploring the cave, they would roll out plastic. Uh, mm. plastic sheets as wide as this and rolled it out and would only walk along these plastic sheets. Never touched anything. They immediately understood the importance of an untouched mm. cave of this magnitude of, of, of artistic achievement. But we don't know whether it was, whether they had an artistic meaning behind it or mm. not. It's completely unknown. So where is this cave located? Inside? In the Ardèche region of mm. uh, southern France. Ardèche, yeah? Ardèche, yeah. There's a river Ardèche which winds through a gorge, uh, a dramatic gorge, which is today used by thousands of tourists who are kayaking down. Mm. And uh, there's a, a so-called Pont d'Arc, uh, a stone. A, a, a natural yeah. stone bridge arch. across it, an mm. arch, mm. which is really totally dramatic and they apparently, it looks like a, a Wagner opera staging. Mm. Mm. And apparently these people, at, at this time the stone arch already existed and they must have had some sort of an understanding of, uh, of, of drama, of landscape. Mm. I'm kind of convinced. And then of course when you illuminate uh, paintings with a torchlight, they start to move. Mm -hmm. the, the images start to flicker and seem to move. And then there's a very strange thing. There's a, a block, uh, a stone block, almost as large as a table. And dead center on it, they placed a skull of a bear for mm. some probably ritualistic. And then they built fires, but not for, nobody inhabited uh, the, the cave. Never anyone cooked in there or lived in there but they put a line of fires and then there is a, a wall and panel and probably 
what my suspicion is that they moved and danced in front of these fires and cast shadows. And I said, in this film, I want to show one of my, maybe the all-time greatest moment in cinema, Fred Astaire dancing with his, with his shadow. And I want to show it. I want to show Fred. I want, I want, no, no, not, not such silly stuff, such minor silly movies. No, Fred Astaire dancing with his shadow. Yeah. Are you narrating it? I will narrate it, yes. And when might it come narrate, out? I yeah, must. When, when oh, I have no idea. It? No it's, idea. Okay. I'm not done shooting <laughs> it. Uh, and 3D post-production is, is highly complex mm. and not fully understood. And, it, mm. and you see, 3D, 3D will always have one major problem. And, and that is uh, when, you, uh, when you look as a human being around here, normally only one eye uh, looks at, dominantly looks mm. at things. The other one you, is, is, is mostly ignored. And only in specific cases, if somebody approaches you, all of a sudden the brain starts to, to use both eyes for establishing depth of field and, and, and understanding space. Or for example, basketball stars in the NBA must have a permanent, during the game, a permanent two-eye 3D vision. But it tires you, it tires you when, when you are as a spectator in a 3D movie. It tires you because you are forced to see with two eyes and two, two images superimposed. So uh, it, it will never, 3D in my, in my opinion, because of that natural law how the brain is selective and delegates uh, most of what we see to one eye only, most of the time, dominantly and only as a vague notion, the, the notion of, of space, mm. of three dimensions. Mm. So it's, in, in my opinion, it will only work for the big firework events mm. that you want to see, like Avatar, yeah? You go to the fireworks and it, it, it <laughs> fires and then it's over and you have seen the, yeah. uh, like, like I, I love to watch the uh, 4th of July fireworks. And that's how some of the films will, will work like fireworks, but you cannot do a, a film like Rashomon in 3D, period. You better stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Do you think so every film will be made? Yeah, no, 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 no